Hello again and welcome to another video. This is our 67 plate BMW 330D M Sport Touring with the auto gearbox and paddle shift. This car uses the ZF 8-speed gearbox. The car has covered just 12,638 miles of full service history with the main dealer and uh, just two keepers from new, so two owners in total. The first keeper had it for 10 months. Now I say the first keeper, there is a chance that the car was um, at a dealership as a demonstrator, but we can't prove that because it doesn't tell us on the logbook anymore nowadays. So we only get to see the last keeper. But uh, the car's in beautiful condition, uh, both inside and out. And I'm gonna take you around the car, show you the spec on the car, We'll show you all the panels, just how nice they are as you'd expect on a car that's only done 12,000 miles. All of the cars are detailed to a really high level, machine polished, the interiors are steam cleaned just to make them, you know, hygienically clean as well as aesthetically pleasing as well. And uh, a lot of effort goes into making sure the cars are just right. And then they're serviced and checked over um, at our local BMW specialist. So we'll start off at the front. The car is in Glacier Silver, a metallic color. Now we fitted some black gloss uh, kidney grills. Now these are the genuine BMW grills. They're not uh, eBay or uh, you know um, copies or anything like that. The car has front and rear parking sensors and uh, also the reversing camera on this car, another extra. Got these lovely LED lights as well, just come in and uh, all of the lenses are in beautiful condition they're not pitted or anything like that as you can see all of the front bumper is really nice i'm just going to bring you in a close uh, closer and just show you i'm going to show all the areas that have usually got marks um there's nothing down there all the fog lights are in really nice condition there's no broken grills down here either because sometimes stones can crack those um, just bring you around this side as well as you can see all in lovely condition now the other area to check we've got a tiny just see that a very very small little chip there you can hardly see it from back here just come along the front this is an area where the stones sometimes just catch really nastily and leave like a scuff, but there's nothing there. We've got one little chip here, which we've, we'll just get that in focus, which we're gonna touch in. We've just had to order another touching stick, but uh, there's gonna be something somewhere, a very small, but there's nothing that's picking up on the camera. The bonnet is in really nice condition. I'm very particular about the finish on the cars. So as you can see, we've got that really glossy shine so we've got a rotary polisher that we use and then one that sort of oscillates around so it sort of moves around in this sort of motion as it's spinning and then what that does is it takes out any holograms you get this really glossy finish with a different compound now if we come down like so it's always good to look down the side of a car to check there's no ripples it's not had any paint work or anything like that and it's past life I'll just show you this front wheel so we've got the 442 19 inch alloy wheels with the m sport brakes they're a bigger caliper bigger disc 370 mil from memory and also this car's fitted with pirelli run flats which i know from experience is probably the most uh, expensive of all the run flats but when you drive the car you notice the difference it feels very much smoother um, you get a different feedback the the bridge stones are a little bit harder and the Pirelli's are softer and it feels although they're run flats it just feels like a smoother drive and all of the tires have got lots of tread on they're not that old these tires and they're star rated now what star rated means is they're approved for the BMWs so the compound of the tyre has been designed to work with the setup of the um, 
car, the way that the tracking and the tow is on the, on the BMW, and uh, it's to make them wear better, as well as grip better and all the rest of it. One thing I didn't show you is the windscreen. There's no nasty chips in the screen. You can see that we've got the high beam assist. We've got this camera just in front of the uh, rear view mirror. And what that does is it picks up on the headlights of oncoming vehicles, etc., and it will automatically dip your main beam for you. And then when the car passes, it will then bring the main beam back up. I'm just scanning over the roof. There's a couple of little black dots. They're not chips. It's just debris that's come down off the roof. It's quite windy outside. And uh, on our old roof, we get a bit of debris come down. But no bird dropping stains on this roof. No tree sap marks. These are things that eat into your paintwork. And there's no scratches. So really nice and tidy up there. Just like a new car. I think I did show you this rear wheel but we'll just show you again there's nothing wrong with that wheel we've got the sun protection glass at the back lci lighting on the car so leds at the back as well as the front all of the rear exhaust tailpipes have all polished up really nicely if i just zoom in you'll see that the guys they use a very fine wire wall with auto sole we've got a few uh other little bits and pieces, a few tricks that we use, and they've all come up beautiful and shiny. It's all about the presentation, and uh, really proud to say that we've just won best used car dealer under 50 cars for the second time. We've uh, we've worked hard, and we've we've won about 11 awards and three highly commended in the last few years. So we're trying our best. I'm just going to come round to this side of the car. In fact, I'll show you this back bumper as well from this side, because look, there's no dents, there's no scuffs. If we come up onto the tailgate as well, I'll show you more around there in, in a minute when we go into the boot, but no scuffs around here. All of the paintwork is lovely, and it's, uh, from what I can see, there's not been any previous paint on this car. All the color matches beautifully. So it's a really nice, straight, clean car. No scratches around the filler cap either. All of the black gloss around the windows is undamaged. Quite often you will see on the edge of the black gloss where it's worn away, where people have maybe polished the cars with a polishing motor and not realized that if you get too close to them, you can take the paint off. So none of that anyway. So as I say, a matching set of parties all round. Uh, this wheel's all perfect as well. Just take you down the panel. There's no scratches, no marks. Got a little bit of a chip just on the very edge of the door here, which, um, like I said, we're waiting for that touch-up to come out. It's very minor, but we're just being very transparent. It is the driver door. You sometimes get that right on the very edge, but we'll get that... Uh, nicely touched in and polished again afterwards. So to be honest with you, there's hardly anything on this car. It's really clean. Just show you down the side again. And that's show you down the side from here. You can just see the reflection on the panels, how it's clean and crisp and it's not wavy at all. That's what you're looking out for when you look down the side of a car like that. And again, driver's side front wheel, all in beautiful condition. So that's pretty much the outside. Let's just come out now. We'll have a little walk around the car from a bit of distance so you can actually get to see the car. So there she is. Really nice for the black gloss grills. I mean, if you like black wing mirrors, that's something that we can opt for, um, have, um, have painted on the car and the protection glass at the back, the darkness of that and the darker wheels. We've got the roof bars all in black, it's all matching. Let's come round to the back of the car now. Back as far as I can, I've got the wall here, so bear with me. 
my squeaky boots as it's so cold today. So really, I mean, the, the free series touring is definitely one of the sportiest out of all of the estate cars. Okay, so let's take a look in the boot now. Now on the tourings, they have a split, and I'll just show you this glass, by the way. There's no scratches on the rear glass. I seem to know where all the damage is on cars when you go around looking at them. I'm so used to looking at cars all the time. But all of this rear glass is lovely. No marks on there at all. And no damage to the um, heating element on the back. That's always annoying. You pick up a car and the heater elements uh, been scratched where they've tried to take a sticker out or something. All lovely and clean, all inside around here, as you can see, beautiful condition. Show you up around there. So they've been really well looked after and then very thoroughly cleaned by the guys. And the parcel shelf, so we've pulled this out, again, to show that it's not got any damage on it. Now we're gonna pull this down and uh, if you put your hand just under the BMW badge there, you've got the handle which will release the boot because it's electric, but we've got a button on the key which will also open up the boot. And you've also got a button just up here to close the boot. Now, this is another area just up here to check. And uh, all this side's absolutely fine. There's no marks up here. There's the very lightest of uh, very, very faint scuff just there. It's very, very minor, but I'm pointing it out to be completely transparent, but all in lovely condition. And if we come down to the bottom, this is also an area where it's very easy to scratch the top of the bumper along here or chip it when you're taking stuff in and out the boot, be it a push chair or something like that. But you'll notice it's not had a lot going in and out of here because there are no scuff marks. Now we'll pull this uh, out the way, we'll release that. I'll just take you up and around. You can just see the finish and the condition of this car. Maybe that's a bit too fast for my camera. There we go. Let's go back a bit. All lovely and clean. As I say, and then if we can look in the back from back here, we've got the, what they call the extended storage. And basically you get this elasticated uh, band on the side here to tuck things behind. And just pull this down out of the way. So you've got that there. You've got the hooks here for your shopping bags. You can also get this 12 volt socket in the back. Very handy if you use those freezer boxes to put your frozen items in. And then all in the uh, side compartment here, you've got the first aid kit, and you'll notice that it's all extremely clean. It's not full of dust and things like that. It's not had a dog in here or anything like that. All the netting on this side, just show you back here, all of the carpets look immaculate. Now in the center here, you've got this lovely bit of storage area there. And then under the back, you've got the locking wheel nut, tow eye, screwdriver. And you'll notice if you look at this picture, the blind sits across the back there. So you can take this out separately. You've still got your cargo net there. And you'll notice also on the back of the seats, when the seats are dropped down, that cargo net pops off fits into those seats when they drop down and then you can locate them with the hooks if you look up by the handle there there's a little cover the, the uh, square cover there pops down and they hook into there opposed to back here so that basically stops any luggage or anything flying forward if you have to apply the brakes hard okay so close that down as the camera is just under there we'll show you more about the camera when we jump in the car 
Um, if I get the key again, we've got the LED lighting under the door handles as well. It's just gone off as I've gone to scan across. And now it won't go on because I've unlocked it twice. But we've got the LED lights under there. Oh, actually I haven't unlocked it, that's why. No. It's funny, when they've been sat for a few minutes, they sort of shut down these cars to stop the batteries going flat. So that's all quite normal. Now there will be lights, I think puddle lights at the bottom. But as I say, we've just uh, taken too long going around the car. So we've got black Dakota leather inside. You can see it's all clean, even right down under here. You can see the light actually, just under there. All of the door card is undamaged. Harman Kardon speakers, 16 speakers in all. Two in this door, there's speakers underneath the seat, up in front of the professional media there, and in the rear. And uh, if I just show you in the back, also got speakers up at the top here. So you've got a full surround system there with a bigger amplifier. Look at the door shut. All lovely and clean all the way round. Just trying to keep it nice and smooth so we keep in focus. So like I say, all nice and clean. All the original mats in lovely condition. All the carpets are lovely. We've got the brushed aluminium trim with the black gloss finisher. Pretty hard wearing the, the brushed aluminium. It's, it's a cost option. And uh, it's better than the painted finishes that you get on some of the cars. Now the little bolster button there, that inflates the bolsters here. It's a rocker button that inflates the bolsters actually. But you know bit tongue twisted. There you go, you can see all the seats are in really nice condition. No, no wear on those edges or anything. The Dakota lever is actually very durable. So, just take a look in there. There's the Pro Media iDrive wheel, which you can actually write with your finger on the top of to put in, um, you know, an alphabet, alphabet well, it's blah, start again to put in uh, your sat and have directions or to look up some of your music. Right, let's take a look in the back. Dear, oh dear, Scott. Get, pull it together. Right, the rear door card. Again, we've got the speakers there. All of the door card in really nice condition. If we look down the door edge and underneath, and we've got lights, puddle lights at the back as well. It's convenient, especially if it's anything like it was yesterday. Absolutely poured it down. And at night, the last thing you want to do is step out the car into a puddle, especially if you're taking your good lady out and she's got some delicate shoes. And the back of the seats as well, no scuff marks there. And worth pointing out also another little area to check the rear vents all intact all nice no damage around there all of the leather seats there's no damage or anything no scratches i've already had a good look round. we've got center armrest that pulls down with cup holders in in the middle the center headrest also pops down to give you better visibility out the back isofix in there of course now we've done the boot so we'll come all the way around to show you around the filler cap. And I just, I think we did this already, but there we go, we've done it again. And then if we show you this door card, so this is driver's side rear. Again, no damage. What we're looking for is scratches on the handles and dig marks sometimes, either down here or up along here. Uh, sometimes when people have the seats down and stuff's put in the back and it moves about, you know, especially if you've got like anything metal wise, it can uh, slide and damage, but it's all good, nothing in there. And look, the seat belts haven't been jammed in the door or anything like that. It's a really tidy 
car as I say, I'm just going round. There we go. And then the back of the driver's seat again, really nice, no damage. Let's take a look down here. All the, all the mats are in the back, all the carpets. Now we have two people, one does the outside of the car and one does the inside of the car. Peters does the inside of the car. And you know, he will spend as much time on an interior, you know, making it as perfect as he can, you know, just cleanliness wise. Um, as most people would spend doing a whole car. It's just the way we work here. We have, the guys are given the time to uh, spend on the car and that's what makes the difference. So driver's door, starting again with the card, the door card, no damage. I have already looked around the whole of the car in fact to, to see if there was anything worth pointing out, you know, any little marks or anything, but there wasn't all clean under there and again the door shut and the seal really clean all lovely up through here all the way around and then this is an area to check down here nowhere because sometimes when people have the seat quite far back they tend to rub this area when getting into the car and it can wear through, you know, believe it or not, but it does. And it's all good on this car. And the bolsters of the seat again, and then up to the top. We've got auto headlights on this car, speed limiter, cruise control. And we're gonna jump in. What I'll do, I'll start the car up. Let's pop these lights on actually. So 12,638 miles on the car. Let's just turn the fan down. I'm gonna put the seat back a bit actually. Right, so on the right side of the steering wheel, you'll see we've got a mode button and a, a roller wheel that you can also press down on. Now we're currently on DAB, if I press it again, the roller wheel will take you through the channels. This is called the full black panel display. And then you can select music. We've got FM, AM. Music collection is the 80 gig hard drive. Your auxiliary, save stations, DAB. And obviously this will bring up the uh, Bluetooth connection for your phone with your music as well. The telephone button below when your phone's connected will also bring up the previous numbers that you've dialed. On this side, oh, we've got voice control over here as well. So you can press down on that. And we want satellite navigation, whether it'll do that or not, I don't know. Navigation, there select you go. a menu option. For example, map or enter destination. Map. Map. There you go, it does work. You don't have to have a German accent to run it. Jeremy Clarkson is wrong. Okay, so I'll well, take a look down here. We've also got dual climate control. Now on this car, let me just make sure this is turned up. I'm just gonna go into the menu. I think this has got the lighting around there. So this is, I'll show you this, um, my vehicle. And you'll see the sub menus on the right there. If you go down to the next one, you've got all different options, etc. So we're going to go into uh, lights, interior lighting, and it is on sport. It's always on sport. Unless it's a default classic. So yes, this has got the uh, LED lighting around the circumference here on the climate control unit. And also, up under the door panels, there's an LED strip. Just get my camera down there. That runs along underneath all the doors. And there'll also be, oops, scary. Uh, another little light in here, I think. Yeah, just in there. And then you'll notice the lights up here in orange. If you put it on sport, it basically, it's a, it's a white LED. It doesn't really show that much. Um, so that's why I prefer to show people on the classic. 
So we've got heated seats at the front as well, dual climate. Um, if we go into the shortcuts, so we've got shortcuts around the iDrive wheel. We'll press on map. If we uh, turn the iDrive wheel, you can zoom in and out. Now this is currently in a direction of travel. Now using these buttons, we can actually use these as shortcuts as well as memorizing uh, dab stations, radio stations, and telephone numbers. If we go over to the left, just flip it down and up, and you'll see that's for route guidance, etc., traffic information, additional information. Going to the map views, this is where you can change the views. So we'll go perspective, which is like as if you're looking forward or as the bird flies. We can save that one on number eight. So rather than having to go into there, if you're in the city of London or in a big city and you want to look at which junction to come off at, it's better in this view and you can just flip it over very quickly. So what else have we got in here? The media. Now, I've just dropped my piece of paper down behind me, so let's just grab that. I'm pretty sure this car does have the Apple CarPlay and uh, the, well, what will probably be the remainder of the online entertainment as well. So in here, in fact, we can drop down manage mobile devices. Really easy to delete. Um, there's your Apple CarPlay. Um, connect, delete device. There we go. We've got a couple of, it's one of the guys here's phone in there. So let's delete that one as well. I find with Audis, it's extremely difficult to delete the phones and the contacts. You take the phone off and for some reason the contacts seem to be in there, whether it's me, but I don't think it is. I'm usually pretty okay with this stuff. So you've got your dab channels, FM music, etc., Bluetooth audio, so you can stream a thing. And then this is your Harman Kardon Logic 7 surround sound and you've got the graphic equalizer in there and you can uh, reset that back to factory because I'm pretty sure they knew what they were doing when they set it up. Now, if we go over to Connective Drive, I don't think there'll be any. This is where you can subscribe to other features, Alexa, Spotify, things like that with BMW and other things. My vehicle, we've already been in here once to show you. I've got the driver profiles. This will go to each key you can set up to have all of your radio stations, etc., etc., um, wing mirror um, settings all under that key. We go to status, tyre pressures, and this car's due to go in, I think. Um, now, let's just check. So that's the PDI, and then this one here, because they're every two years um, carried out late six months. Well, it obviously hadn't done any mileage, and I think that was in the lockdown. So no wonder why it's late. I don't know why that's on there. In fact, I think we'll get that... Um, that late bit taken off because it's, <laughs> the, it's every 19,000 miles or two years. It was done at 5,000 miles. I'm sure BMW can be a little bit more flexible than that. If we look down here, you can see that we've got 18,000 miles remaining. Brake fluid, 1123. Vehicle check. Front pads have got 45,000 miles. Mm, whether they do 45,000 miles or not, I don't know. Depends how you brake, I guess, but uh, it will calibrate to how the pads wear, and then the rear 60,000. I think actually BMW have done away with that uh, feature now because uh, it depends how it's calibrated. But they've got plenty of tre uh, tread, they've got plenty of life on them. We, we physically check them as well, we have a good look at them. So, notifications that's all for your messages. So, we've pretty much done that. We've got cup holders down here. 12 volt socket here there is in fact another 12 volt socket underneath we've got all the books in here the books aren't blurred that was just the camera there we go and uh, just inside the center armrest we've got USB and auxiliary our 8 speed ZF gearbox drive sport mode on the gearbox there as well and then using the drive modes here, if I just come down to here, Eco Pro through to Sport. Let's get it back in, there we go. Let's get it back in park. So Eco Pro, 
changes the software settings for the ECU that runs the engine. And uh, if you look down here, it's, it's at 92%. If we turned off some of the features that we've currently got selected, that drops right the way down to 60%. So coasting allows the car to roll on without engine braking. The Eco Pro Climate restricts the climate from working at full power and sort of trickles it out to because that's using the air conditioning pump and that draws more energy from the engine etc and then the eco pro limit up here is to do with the speed that you select so if we reduce this to 60 we're now at 97 percent what do you have to do to get to 100 i wonder 30 50 mile an hour 50 mile an hour or well, thereabouts what happens if you go to 55 99% there you go everyone will be driving at 50 miles an hour from now on okay next setting is comfort which is a balance in between so the throttle in eco pro is is quite flat because it's restricting everything for fuel economy uh, in, in uh, comfort it's a more balanced setting as I say and then sport you get a much more responsive feel. You've got these uh, displays that give you the kilowatts, newton meters, or you can have it in pounds per foot and uh, pounds per foot and uh, brake horsepower. That was the one. And configure sport. Well, this doesn't have the adaptive suspension, so although it has this feature here, it doesn't actually. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Drive chain and chassis. Well drive chain it will adjust the the performance for the engine so that it does do but it doesn't adjust the chassis and for the life of me i don't know why they allow it to light up on there it will probably change the the, the steering very slightly um but you probably wouldn't notice but uh it does change the performance now if you go into sport plus it not only changes the performance but it also takes off part of the traction control Hence, we've got this little light on down here. And if you press and hold the traction button, you can turn it off fully, and you'll see the other part, DSC, is now turned off as well. Right, before we run out of time, let's take a quick look under the bonnet. So this is our 258 I think it's PS or opposed to brake horsepower. I think brake horsepower is around about 254, somewhere around there. Um, three, uh, sorry, six cylinder engine with the twin power turbo. So the difference between a 335 and a 330 is the number of turbos and the power. The 335 actually has two turbos. It's still called uh, a twin power turbo, but the setup is different. This has, this one, the 330, has a twin scroll turbo. So there are two inlets into the turbo from the cylinders, uh, from the uh, exhaust manifold. So you get a much better flow of air into the turbo. It's much more responsive at spinning the turbo up because you've separated the flow of air. Because it's all about air speed with turbos and how quickly you can get it through there. And basically the turbo wants to be nice and hot because thin air, sorry, hot air is thinner and it runs faster. And then that's why you have an intercooler. So the air that comes from the turbo, which is then hot, is then cooled down to go into the engine because you don't want hot air going into the engine because you want it to expand from cold to give you combustion. So all clever stuff. All lovely and clean. As you can hear it runs so smooth i mean the 320 is a great engine but the six cylinder is uh, is a lot smoother and it is, it's quieter as well and it's really nice all right let's pop that down last quick look at the car otherwise i'll be getting a note from youtube saying your videos are too long well, thanks for taking the time to look at the car and watch the video. We've got lots of different finance options, warranties. We've got some great packages on warranties. And uh, if you have any questions, please give us a call. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.